Hello friends, welcome back to the shop and welcome to another episode of Faith Chat Friday. But I, I would like to caution you that this is probably something that's going to be interesting to uh, a general audience. So you don't have to be somebody that's really into to religion or faith uh, or the religious aspects of Christmas to, to appreciate this. Because I'm going to be talking about something that's really become part of our cultural experience of, of the Christmas season. And that is the, uh, the three wise men or the three magi. Um, I've been fascinated with this part of the nativity narrative for, for a long time. Uh, you know, this time of year, I, as I'm sure many of you do, like to, to read through the, the nativity narratives in the gospel and, and just be reminded of, of uh, what happened and, and the importance of what, what happened when uh, Christ was born. Uh, but it's always struck me as the, the, this, this three wise men narrative, the... Um, you know, the Magi coming and offering gifts and all that, it, it's always struck me as being almost this side story that, that occurs, and it's just full of these little tantalizing tidbits that, you know, I want to know the full story, I want to know more. And of course, we, we've only been revealed very little. Uh, only uh, only uh, is mentioned in Matthew, and Matthew mentions uh, very, very little about the, the three wise men. So uh, we'll, we'll get into that. I'm going to actually uh, read the, the bit from Matthew, uh, just a few verses. And uh, then what I'd like to do is talk a bit about what this has meant to me in terms of you know, praying over these, these passages and, and trying to get a better feel for what it is that God is trying to tell me. And then I'd like to share with you a, a poem uh, by T.S. Eliot called The Journey of the Magi. And I think you'll understand by the end of this why I want to share that poem with you. Uh, but it's, it's, I believe, a beautiful poem that really captures something important. So let's begin um, very simply. I'm just going to read from Matthew uh, the narrative that, it, that tells of the journey and uh, visit and gifts of the Magi. So this is, I'm, I'm using the, uh, this is the Revised Standard Version of the Bible. It's the Catholic edition. Uh, I like this translation, but uh, there are many, many good translations. And in this translation, the, the, uh, the Magi are referred to as the wise men. And it's important to realize that there's, the, the, the original Greek was uh, Magoi, uh, which could be interpreted as wise men, could be interpreted as priests, could be interpreted as fortune tellers. I mean, there's a lot of ways that it can be translated, but very, very likely in, in the context of uh, what was going on. These were three priests, or well, these were priests, I won't say three, uh, from Persia, and they very likely were um, Zoroastrian priests, so they were not part of the Jewish tradition. They were coming from outside of that. And, uh, yeah, so this translation referred to them as wise men. Uh, so this is Matthew uh, chapter 2, just the first few verses. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and we have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all of Jerusalem with him. And assembly, assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet. And they're, he's, they're quoting uh, the prophet Micah here. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For you shall become, for from you shall come a ruler who will govern my people Israel. So Herod heard that these wise men were passing through, uh, looking for the king. Uh, um, Herod got the prophecy clarified for him, so he knew what was to be expected. Now keep in mind, he is king of the Jews, and here's a prophecy of the, the birth of a king of the Jews. And he obviously wants to get up on this, so he brings all of his people together and says, you know, what's going on? Give, explain the prophecy to me. And once he understands it, the, the gospel goes on. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, 
bring me word that I too may come and worship him. Now Herod probably had other things in mind. I too may come and worship him. When they had heard the king, they went their way, and lo, the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. And that's it. That's everything we know about the three wise men. You'll notice uh, one thing that I, I keep stumbling over is the fact that there is no number of wise men or no number of magi. Uh, we, we have no idea how many there were. We know there were three gifts, and because there were three gifts, we tend to assume there were three gift givers, but that's not actually indicated. And it's interesting, if you look at art, uh, you know, paintings dating back to certainly the Middle Ages, the number of magi or wise men varies quite a bit, uh, and anywhere from two up to, I, I believe it's up to twelve. Uh, so this three is a relatively modern um, interpretation. But it, it, it's a reasonable interpretation because there were, of course, three gifts. And the three gifts were very important because of what they represented. So they're, they're somewhat unusual. You know, gold is, is obviously a gift, uh, a, a very valuable gift. And that is a gift that would usually be reserved for a king. So it's recognizing the, the kingship of, of, of Jesus. Uh, the frankincense is uh, used in anointing priests. And, and this is recognizing the fact that, that Jesus is a priest who will be offering uh, the ultimate sacrifice, that will be offering the sacrifice that will bring us salvation. And the third gift is myrrh, which is actually used in anointing bodies for burial. So it's a recognition that in that sacrificial act, uh, Christ will die. And of course, uh, a, a sort of prefiguring of the, uh, the death and resurrection of, of Christ and our ultimate salvation through that. So just in that little snippet, there's so much packed in there. It's, it's, it's really wonderful to just try to unpack that and uh, just, just pray over it and think, you know, what is God trying to, to tell me here? Uh, the other thing that has always fascinated me about this is, you know, you think about these, these wise men. Let's say there's three because I'm going to keep saying there's three. You think about them. So they're coming from Persia. They are probably Zoroastrian. They are not familiar with messianic prophecy. They are not um, very likely going to understand what it is that they're seeing. They just know that by whatever means they discovered this, they should go and seek out this king. And then they see him, and they fall down and worship him. So they recognize him as God. Now these are people that have no way of... of expecting that and basically what has happened is their whole belief system has been turned upside down everything that they believed prior to that moment they now know is not true and then what happens they're asked in a dream not to go back to Herod because Herod wants to kill the baby Herod wants to remain king of the Jews they're told in a dream not to go back and they've been changed enough by that experience that they accept that and they leave and, and they're never heard from again Imagine that, going back home after that transformative experience, you know, seeing the living God, and going back into a, you know, your day-to-day -day routine, your Zoroastrian faith, your, if you're a priest, your, your uh, congregation, or whatever, I don't know what Zoroastrians have, uh, <laughs> continuing to worship the way they worship, and you know that this is not the true path. It, it must have been devastating to them. Did they go back and begin preaching that the, the you know, God is God incarnate is with us? I doubt it. I, it would have been a very dangerous thing for them to do. We certainly have no evidence of it. Um, but think about that in the context of what we do in our own lives when God reveals something to us. You know, are we afraid to to share that? Are we willing to share it at at the, the risk of loss. You know, we could lose friends, family, jobs, you know, ultimately our lives for our beliefs. 
do we have the faith and the strength to, to, to offer those sacrifices for what we believe in? And as we read this, you know, one of the things that I like to do is, is to incorporate that into prayer and to say, you know, God, give me that strength. You know, help me to be a good representative of what it is that you revealed to me so that I can strengthen the faith of others, so that my, my example can bring them closer to you. Uh, it's a hard path to walk, and I fail miserably at it, and I, I hope that many of you walk it with me and probably fail just as much. But the important thing is that we keep trying, and we keep asking for the grace and the strength to continue on. So it's that thought, that idea of these, these wise men returning to their homes with their new knowledge that I believe spurred uh, T.S. Eliot, the great poet of uh, 1920s, 1930s, I believe, uh, one of my favorite poets. Uh, T.S. Eliot was a uh, late convert to Anglicanism, but very devout Anglican. And he wrote this poem called The Journey of the Magi. Now, the poem is an ex a, a sort of a reliving of the, the journey and what they saw from the standpoint of one of the wise men. And in it you get this sense of being changed, being transformed, and having to go back home with what you know. And the ending is a little bit shocking. It, it evokes emotion, but I think it's a very important emotion. Um... I think it's it's sort of pointing towards our ultimate salvation. So I hope you enjoy it. I hope you have a blessed Advent for, for what remains of Advent. And I wish you all a very blessed and joyous Christmas season. The Journey of the Magi by T.S. Eliot A cold coming we had of it. Just the worst time of the year for a journey. And such a long journey. The ways deep and the weather sharp, the very dead of winter. And the camels galled, sore-footed, refractory, lying down in the melting snow. There were times we regretted the summer palaces on slopes, the terraces and the silken girls bringing sherbet. Then the camel men, cursing and grumbling and running away and wanting their liquor and women, and the night fires going out, and the lack of shelters, and the cities hostile, and the towns unfriendly, and the villages dirty and charging high prices. A hard time we had of it. At the end, we preferred to travel all night, sleeping in snatches, with the voices singing in our ears, saying that this was all folly. Then at dawn, we came down to a temperate valley, well, below the snow line, smelling of vegetation, with a running stream and a water mill beating in the darkness, and three trees on the low sky, and an old white horse galloped away in the meadow. Then we came to a tavern with vine leaves over the lintel, six hands at the door open, dicing for pieces of silver, and feet kicking the empty wineskins, but there was no information. And so we continued and arrived at evening, not a moment too soon, finding the place, it was, you may say, satisfactory. All this was a long time ago, I remember, and I would do it again, but set down this, set down this, where we led all that way for birth or death. There was a birth, certainly. We had evidence and no doubt. I had seen birth and death, but I had thought that they were different. This birth was hard and bitter agony for us. Like death, our deaths. We returned to our places, these kingdoms, but no longer at ease here in the old dispensation with an alien people clutching their gods. I should be glad for another death. I hope you enjoyed that. God bless you all.